Could you please sit down? Could you please sit down and observe the silence part? Thank you very much. All righty, good evening everybody. Thank you for joining us. Tonight is the February 13th, 2014, which is actually the February 20th. It's February 13th, it was postponed to due to snow last week. Uh, February 20th, uh, town board work session. Would you please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Just to be clear, uh, town board work session is really a time where the town board can convene. We convene in public to discuss matters of uh, town interest. So that's what we do tonight. Tonight we have our professionals with us, our town attorney, Tom Wood, town engineer, Scott Bryant, town controller, Mar uh, Mark Posniak. And tonight we have our planner, Michelle Robbins. Uh, we don't normally see our planner here tonight, but we're talking about zoning ordinances. So we're very happy to have Michelle here. She works for AKRF. and. Uh, very happy actually to have Michelle as part of the team. I think she does a terrific job. Um, we're going to talk a little bit tonight about proposed zoning ordinance changes, which the board has received a few weeks ago. We had actually started working on this towards the end of last year, so we'll be talking about that. And after that, I want to discuss to bring the board members up to speed on just a couple of the projects that we're working on so that they know where we are because we have some new town board members here present with us. So if we could, I just have a few announcements tonight. Um, being as my agenda still says February 13th, it reminds me that last week we had heck of a snowstorm and I'd like to thank our highway department. Our highway department did a terrific job in plowing the streets and uh, they worked very long hours, very hard, but they did a good job. Um, and it was a tough storm. I think that we had something like 22 inches of snow. Cablevision said Hopewell Junction was the hardest hit area. And actually when I went to bed, I think it was Thursday night, we had thunder, lightning, Slee, I mean, it was a heck of a storm, but I'd like to just thank our highway department for all the work that they did and uh, proud of them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, second announcement is Julie's Jungle. Um, and I would like to thank Jan McHugh and the Julie's Jungle crew because Julie's Jungle is our playground that we're proposing for the Lime Kiln Recreation Center. And uh, Julie's Jungle is for children of all abilities. And uh, it's for children to be handicapped, wheelchair, what have you, cognitive, disabled, um, and for regular kids. This is a playground where everybody can come together and play. And as I was saying to some of our board members before, which I find really touching, is that this is gonna be a special time for kids who have a disability where they can actually play with other children and maybe really feel so close to, to regular kids. I mean, I find this is very touching. And actually, I didn't even realize I found like a distant cousin of mine whose little child has, uh, is very disabled and they're very big supporters of Fishkill of our project. So uh, we're very happy to announce that we made an application for a community development op block grant. Um, and everybody knows that our grant track record, we very rarely get grants, but we got approved for $100,000 from Dutchess County for Julie's Jungle. So we're very proud of that. I'd like to thank uh, our county legislature, our county legislator, March Horton's with us tonight. The legislature backed us. Um, county Executive Molinero is behind this project 100%. So uh, I'd just like to announce $100,000 grant uh, from Dutchess County um, and the Julie's Jungle Group never stops fundraising. Um, I think they were walking around taking donations in the hallway just a few minutes ago. Um, they raised, I believe, probably close to $70,000. And uh, I'm going to, in our board, what I propose to our board is we will match the $100,000 from Dutchess County from our rec development fund. So I'm gonna ask them to put a resolution on the table. It won't be next week, it'll probably be in the March meeting, appropriating $100,000 from our rec development fund to match the $100,000 that we've gotten from Dutchess County uh, for Julie's Jungle. I believe we're looking at project costs of approximately $400,000. I will ask our highway superintendent if they will participate, do the rough grading, do some of the cleaning up of the site. And uh, I think this year we'll actually break ground and we will see Julie's Jungle begin to come to, to, to pass. So we're very excited about that. Um, my third announcement, I do have a few tonight. The generator has been installed at the community center. Um, I'd like to thank everybody involved that worked on the project. 
Uh, one of the things about the community center, like many public facilities at the town of East Fishkill, when the power goes out, power goes out. But we do have a generator at the community center, and that will actually become a warming center in the, in the event that the power goes out in wintertime, or it'll be a cooling center if sometimes in the summertime we lose power. So we're very, <clears throat> excuse me, very happy with that. Um, one other thing, last August, Eric Gurner uh, came to my office, and it, I just, I'm sometimes just so amazed at the people in East Fishkill. Eric stopped in, introduced himself, said he's lived here, I don't know, decades, many, many years. He's an artist. He is donating a picture to us of a house uh, out in Stormville, a beautiful picture of, of an old house, one of our old historic houses out in Stormville. And the picture is breathtaking. It really is, is just amazing. Um, he told me his history. I believe he has <clears throat> dozens of pictures that are at West Point on display. He is very good. He's donating one here. So if anybody's noticed that the display out front on this side of, of this side of the building has been vacant, being worked on for the last few months, um, that's what it's for. So next week before the town board meeting at 7:15, um, we're going to do a presentation. Eric is going to bring his picture. We're going to hang it, and it's going to be a wonderful thing. He's donating it to the town of East Fishkill. So I just want to let everybody know about that. And. Uh, Finally, last thing under announcements, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a cold tonight. Um, in the past probably year and a half, maybe two years, um, the National Guard has proposed building a uh, the National Guard repair facility in the town of Beekman. Now this facility was going to be just across the town line in the town of Beacon, right next to Greenhaven Prison. They were going to take, I forget how many acres, it was supposed to be a very large maintenance facility. Beekman thought it was the greatest thing in the world until they found out that the property would then come off the tax rolls. That being said, they thought it was a great thing. Um, we knew for East Fishfield, all it meant was we were going to get their traffic. We were going to have large trucks, small trucks, personnel and mechanics coming through our town because 99 percent of the traffic would go through the town of East Fishfield get to this recreation, this, uh, re excuse me, not re this, uh, this maintenance facility. Um, and we've written letters that we're very concerned about the traffic, written them to Senator Gillibrand's office, to our state representatives. Senator Gillibrand's office actually responded. And they gave us the same old, well, here's the traffic studies, which our traffic engineers disputed. Um, but what happened was they were a, a victim of the budget cuts. So I got an email last month that said that they've canceled the uh, the construction of the National Guard maintenance facility in the town of Beekman, they're going to go down to, what's the one down in Westchester? Camp Smith. Camp Smith. They're going to go down to Camp Smith, they're going to retrofit Camp Smith, and that is where we always felt this facility should be. So because of the budget cuts in Washington, that's where it's going to happen, and we're not going to have the issues with traffic that we, had, we actually had feared with the other project. So, uh, They've canceled the National Guard maintenance facility for the town of Beekman, and it's a very good thing for the town of East Fishkill. Uh, so that's about it. Uh, that's all the announcements for tonight. Um, and I did not put a lot of things on the agenda for discussion, but I know the board, we did receive uh, the proposed zoning changes. And I would like to say, Michelle, if you just give us a little uh, background on how these zoning changes came to be and then we will discuss them here. And if, any, and if any of the board members have any questions tonight, please ask the professionals. And if you come up with something, you know, before the next meeting or something, give a call, stop by, and we'll answer any questions anybody has on this. So, Michelle, if you would. Um, from time to time. Um, and Michelle, would you pull the microphone to you a little bit, because you're rather soft-spoken anyway. From time to time, we um, need to adjust or update the zoning code. And um, in this case, I, I I'm always taking an ongoing list of little tweaks that need to occur with zoning because either we don't have, we realize when we're looking at the zoning code, we don't have a definition of something. Um, like for instance, we didn't have a definition for bridge. And that comes up, it, it's critical because when we're looking at things, we need to understand what East Fishkill defines as a bridge. Um, and then I also um, speak with staff. I speak with Mary Mintz who has to enforce the code. So every once in a while she'll come across something that um, is difficult to enforce or because it isn't, isn't clear in the zoning code. So we made, um, we compiled a bunch of these uh, little tweaks is what I would, I, I, they're very minor for the most part. Um, and we, we drafted them up and um, that's what's in front of you right now. Um, there's a bunch of definitions. There's a few, um, 
there's, there's an update to the, the shed definition um, that, that's related. That, I think that's an issue a lot with the um, ZBA. They have a lot of, of sh yeah. people coming in. And we also have, we also look at um, things that we have conflicts with when we have to give lots of variances, for instance, on certain things. We realize that maybe the code is, is, is not working properly in, in certain circumstances. So um, in this case, we came up with a bunch of things. A lot of them have to do with efficiency and just making sure that it's, it's clear that people can get through a process faster in some cases. Um, we've uh, implemented sort of a pre-application meeting and we've defined that in the code. And, um, and that's what you see in front of you. And there's, a sub, there's definitions that that are uh, interchangeable between the subdivision code and the zoning mm -hmm. code. So you see one local laws for subdivision regulations and one is for the zoning. You know, Michelle, and if I may uh, just interject on that point, uh, as far as making it more efficient, um, I like the, the, uh, the pre-meeting, to be able to meet with the planning board before you actually make a, the pre-application meeting. I think that is very good. So before anybody really gets too involved with an application, sit down with the board and, and get their feeling for for, for how it's going to fit and what, what the concerns are going to be. The other one that I really like, and I've had this has been a pet peeve for, for many years, is uh, we're going to, I believe, a minor modification to a site plan. Is that included? Yes. This is a wonderful thing because what happens when you do a site plan, say, I'll just take one of our local plazas, you do a site plan for a plaza, and you show a building footprint, you show this and that. But what happens? Um, often you get a restaurant where you didn't know you were going to get a restaurant and all of a sudden you have a restaurant. When you get a restaurant in a place you didn't plan for a restaurant, typically you have to build out for a walk-in cooler or something like that. What happens with that in our, in our current code is send you right back to the planning board for a, a, a modification of the site plan. Whereas if it's done as a minor modification, it just streamlines the process to something that really wasn't quite the first time around, but it's really not that big a deal because it's commercial and it's not a huge impact on, on the square footage. It can be a building so. department referral. Yes. Essentially, it can go, go through the building department rather than having to come in, in front of the planning board. Yeah, and coming back to the planning board means fees, uh, escrow, time and, and time. Yeah. yeah. So in my mind, this really will help streamline the process for the applicants that, that you know, for these minor modifications. So I'm very happy to see that. Well, I see for the past two years sitting in the prep meetings that, you know, all the time these little things come up and, you know, the attorney or the um, engineer would say, well, we should put that on our list of things to do, things to change. And, yeah. uh, like the shed, that comes up all the time in yeah. the zoning, uh, zoning board. So um, a couple other things that I was looking at was the minor and major subdivision. The only question I had was, um, it said that if it doesn't exceed 10 acres, to be, it, it would stay a minor subdivision. So if you had five lots and it was 20 acres, it would be a major subdivision? Because okay. the reason being typically, I mean, you see minor and major subdivision <coughs> categories in most zoning codes. Um, in fact, most of the, the towns that I work in, other towns that I work in, they do have that def differentiation between the two. But the reason you often see it with a smaller acre is because you, you typically have less impacts with the smaller the size of the land. So you'd have less of a chance that you'd have impacts to habitat, trees, um, and also whatever you're, if, if you're clearing it, you're going to have less impact visually as well. Um, so that's why typically it, it remains with a smaller lot number and a smaller um, acreage. Lot size. Got it. Thank you. Oh, here's a bridge. That'd be something that's near and dear to our engineer's heart. Scott, you're very quiet tonight. Michelle's doing all the talking. Isn't it going to be having a planner here? I'm sure I'll get my opportunity. Yeah, you wish you <laughs> we should have a planner here more often to give the engineer a break. Uh, one of the other ones I did, I did want to talk about a little bit that we have found to be a bit problematic in the past is uh, abandonment, abandonment costs. And maybe that's something we could discuss just real quickly because what we've seen is Planning board applications will get to a certain point, and what happens is, for whatever reason, they are not followed through on, and they may sit dormant for years and years. But some, some they'll come along, somebody will come along, and all of a sudden want to bring it back. But it's governed then by the old code, not the new code. So I think our steep slopes, our wetlands. So Tom, you want to talk about that a little bit? He's sure. our attorney to give our planner a break. Well, basically, the one provision uh, does just that. It provides that 
if an applicant is before the planning board and they don't uh, file to have it on a planning board agenda for a period of two years or more, then the application is deemed abandoned um, and they would have to refile and start the process over. And just as you said, Mr. Supervisor, it would be to ensure that any new laws enacted, et cetera, that normally would not affect that application would now come into play. But we have been plagued here in the town with several large, excuse me, large projects um, that were filed maybe up to 10 years ago and they would be active before the board and then the economy would churn or whatever and they would disappear and then they come back and they may be in the midst of the environmental review and while certain rules require certain aspects of the application to be updated not all elements of it are updated so that projects that maybe were thought of 10 years ago well, with the changes that have occurred in the community, maybe have to be readdressed. So with the abandonment provision, uh, it puts the applicant on notice that they have to keep diligently processing their application. Two years is, is a, a very comfortable length of time because normally the longest hiatus you have is when someone who has a major project has to write their environmental impact study that could take, you know, 12 months because it's a, a big project. So we thought two years was, you know, very generous time. And of course, nothing would preclude an applicant from coming back in before the planning board, updating the planning board as to where they were, and then the clock would be restarted mm -hmm. and, and kept going. So we think it's something worthy of consideration by the board. Uh, let me just ask this too. Now you have a project that say was, was started, say six years ago and Obviously, the economy's been difficult. The applicant didn't do anything. They came in after their two years, said, look, I can't pursue it now, but I'm still interested in keeping it going. So he asked for another two-year extension. But what, ha what would happen if in that four-year time period, uh, say, DEC changed wetlands laws or floodplain? We know, and this is one of the issues we've had, is floodplains have been remapped by FEMA, mm -hmm. which has right. really thrown a monkey wrench into a lot of things because it changed the whole... The well, an extension would not be available to them just by coming and saying, yeah. I want two more years. Yeah. They would have to show that they've been working on whatever the issue was. If it was okay. the DIS, uh, the wetland, whatever okay. the issue was that's taking that time, yeah. that they're working with another agency, etc. They just can't come in and say, you know, I've decided to put it on hold for two okay. years. Because okay. that would really defeat the whole purpose yeah. Yeah. of you keeping the projects updated with yeah. the codes. Yeah. And the code, so then the new codes would be taken into consideration during that period? They would be taken, if the application becomes dormant mm -hmm. and they have to restart, then the new then laws come into okay. effect. Right. All right. Now, how long do they have to break ground after they're approved? Well, if it's a subdivision. Can I, sit, can I well, sit for two years after that? Yeah, oh yeah, you get a lot of time after it's approved. What happens is once you, you get preliminary, and if it's a subdivision, you get preliminary approval first. Yeah. The state legislature changed the law. We used to, in the past, only be able to give extensions of up to one year. Now there's no cap on that. You do have to come back to the planning board to show that you're diligently clearing. Like when you get preliminary approval, normally it says we approved the 10 lots subject to the Department of Health approval, maybe DOT, whatever. So it's not unrealistic to think some projects could take a year to get those other approvals. So um, it, now, as long as you come to the planning board, show that you've been working with DOT, DOH, you can get extensions. Then you finally get your final approval, and then final approval is good for six months now, and you can get that extended. And then once you file the subdivision map, uh, and if you post the bond, you can wait forever to do your subdivision. And okay. they never have to meet new upgrades or new codes? No, once that. the map is filed, once they get preliminary approval, their rights uh, to that development are virtually 100% guaranteed, unless they can't fulfill one of the conditions. You get a vested property right at preliminary approval. That's why some of these houses that are popping up are being built in wetlands? Right, because a lot of them we've, that's that right, a lot of them. 20 years ago. Yeah. Well, you exactly. could still have lots around that were on a filed map that were filed before any wetlands law. Yeah. You know. yeah. I think these, uh, looking at the zoning changes, I appreciate, and, and I, I think that it's a good start at uh, modifying, the, changing the process and streamlining it. And I think you really came up with some good ideas. The planning board has seen this, correct? The planning board has reviewed it, this? Yeah, in they fact, the yeah, they tossed Tuesday night, they reviewed it. They had one minor recommendation about changing a word in the definition. 
Okay. Uh, also, the Dutchess County Planning Department's letter came back that I think the board should have that. Uh, they feel it's a matter of local concern, and they recommended considering a little modification of one of the definitions to make it clearer, they thought. Okay. And I'd just like to go back to something about the sheds. I don't want to give everyone the wrong impression that you can't have a shed. Okay. Uh, what this law would do is uh, you're allowed to have a shed without the requirement of a building permit. The state code just raised it from 100 square feet to 144 square feet. Right. So this law recognizes that change in the state code mm -hmm. so that if you're building a shed that's less than 144 square feet, you still do not have to have a building permit and you don't have to comply with the regular um, setbacks and there's a separate setback for, for, for that. Smaller shed. So you yeah. still have that entitlement. What this law does do is say that shed's bigger than that or if you have more than one shed like that, you would have to get a, a building permit and ensure mm -hmm. that the proper setbacks are in place. Uh, you know, and obviously, and that's, I guess, I believe the shed, uh, the size for a shed, the maximum size used to be 10 by 10, now it's 12 by 12. Right. Um, this is New York State law. Correct. This is building code. See, this is one of the other things that maybe people don't realize when they go to our building department and say, where do you come up with all these things? New you York come up State. from New York State. <laughs> and this is what it is. New York State dictates to us so much in the building and fire code, CICRA, um, and in the planning board process. So there is a lot of what we do is really mandated by New York State. So, uh, and, and as you said, Tom, when he talking about the extensions and the allowances for New York State, again. So, uh, but I think this actually will, at least will help our process internally work better. So. I have a question for Tom. Uh, um, once a project is dormant for two years, um, how specific is it after that documentation uh, to bring that project back uh, to... Uh, well, then after, if, it, if it's declared dormant, then right. if to come back, you have to refile an application. You have to start over. From zero. Right. However, it may mean that some of the materials you develop might still be used in that application. Right. But uh, it's a new application which automatically says whatever law is in effect when you file are the laws that you're going to be governed by. So if somebody has done some of the work and is still complying with the, with the laws. If they, are, if they are actually pursuing exactly. whatever, then that two years doesn't apply to them. But it's, but it's just the people who put everything up on the shelf and sit back and go on to another project or don't do anything. Right. And the next thing you know, and, and we've had several that come back. One came back after three years, did a little more stuff, then it went away, then it came back a second time after about two and a half, three years. Um, and I'm not talking about, you know, like a two-lot subdivision. Those wouldn't really fit into this category. I'm talking about 140, 150 lot subdivisions, you know. So. Okay, any questions? Any other questions from the board? Um, actually, one, I uh, mentioned a couple months ago, like the pieces of property that we got in town, the businesses that went out of business, the special uses. Remember, like, I don't want to name places. Don't name places. You know, like a lot of these places that were in business, uh, yes. they sit pre-existing, non-conforming, pre-existing, non-conforming, and they, after a year they lose it's their pre-existing. Pre right, that, that's already in this. No, uh, pre-existing, non-conforming is a separate section of law. You're not changing that, and right now that says it's a period of one year. Okay. Okay. So what that would be is a structure is built, and it's a small business that's really in a residential zone, or a house that's in a business zone. If the property owner ceases using it as a business or a house, depending on it, uh, for a period of one year or more under the current zoning, which has always been in effect, it has to revert back to the uses that are allowed in the zone. So if it's a business in a residential zone, there's no business there for more than a year, the property can only be used residentially. And the same as if it's a residence in a business zone, after a year of being vacant or not being used, it has to revert to what it is. That's not being changed. Is there a way that we can somewhat change, look at possibly mm -hmm. giving people the opportunity to change it? Because some of these places, well, I, I don't think we'll ever go back. If I may, Peter, I mean, I think they always have that opportunity. Either they can go, they come to us, ask for rezone. I would believe that would be something they could do. But I don't think we want to rezone them. Okay, That's if you want to rezone, I do believe they go to the Zoning Board of Appeals. Uh, Tom, could they get a use variance for something like that? Well, except use variance is very difficult. I think what you're talking about, what some communities are doing, 
is they're looking at the different categories. Like and like if you have um, a less onerous use, something non-conforming in a commercial district, you might extend that one year, change it to maybe two years, so that it would have to be not used for two years before it reverted back. However, most communities keep the one year in residential zones because, you know, usually if you have a non-conforming use, it's more impactful if it's around a bunch of residences. Yeah. I mean, but, but I still think some of them are not in what I would call a residential neighborhood. What okay, is well, it we're talking about? I mean, I, I, I don't know. What you mean. What? Well, no, I don't we, want to say that. Let, let me just, let me just, let me just say, yeah, I see. And if I may, there's a lot of buildings. Well, there. Peter, if I, if I may, why don't we sit down and talk with Michelle and Tom one day and go through this, and, unless you have a pre-existing non-conforming use that I didn't know about. No, I don't. <laughs> no, but why don't we sit down? I mean, no, it's just a, a lot oh, of yeah. the buildings that are abandoned. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't know they'll yeah. ever get reopened as as what as they were as residential. Yeah. Right. Well, no, they can't get opened as what they were. Right, it has because to be residential. Been empty right. For yeah. Well, we also, I mean, year. we've discussed this before, and maybe it's yeah. something we're going to have to work on. Is a lot of our zoning districts have really gotten um, mm -hmm. well, we antiquated. Like, for instance, if you look at it, it's rather frightening. The industrial zones. I mm -hmm. forget. I always get mixed up. Is the I three the I one? we have vacant land in some areas that are actually still zoned I-3, which is your heaviest industrial use, and it's completely surrounded by residential. So there's a case where maybe you want to change the zoning of that to maybe a B-1 zone, which allows some commercial use, but not the heaviest industrial right. use. And we do have pockets of that, especially along the uh, major thoroughfares, yeah that I think is really worthy of review at some point. You know, you know why don't we do this? And, and Peter, if you uh, would like to take a, you know, a couple of town board members, take a, look, take a look at our zoning map, because I agree with Tom. I mean, what we have, say, in the, in the old hamlet, the old center of town um, behind you, um, which used to be, that was the railroad, there were the, whole, the railroad depots over there. It used to be a roundhouse over there. You know, and that's still zoned heavy industrial, but that's right exactly. in the town. If you were to rezone that, and I don't want to mean scare anybody who's over there has a business, but maybe we, I would say we could make an industrial area some other place in town be more appropriate. No, you I, know? I, no, I'm not really talking about any areas in particular. Okay. I mean, there's just specific buildings. Specific buildings, okay. and my thought would be, I wouldn't give them back what necessarily what they had before, because even mm -hmm. if you go in with something else, it's going to mm -hmm. be less onerous. Mm -hmm. But in the same token, if there's been a commercial building and they built up around it and built residences around it and it's gone empty and they haven't filled it that they should be able to but let the neighborhood still get somewhat of a some say, say a public hearing that mm -hmm. says okay yeah we can live with that well we, we can take a look at that if you give us some examples then i can work with michelle yeah, yeah, maybe yeah, by on. doing that i think you're taking some rights away from people that they own properties and uh then you're well, opening up a can of worms i mean yeah but uh, right now they lose all the rights I, I think it's I, I think it's come to me what what you're referring to, and basically generically, it was it's in a residential district, it was a, a commercial property, it's, it's been vacant for four or five years, oh, and four. maybe longer, and of course now it can only be marketed as a residential property. Mm -hmm. So I think what Peter is and saying, and, and it really is a lot that lends itself to being a business type use, even though it's surrounded by all houses. Right. Um, and I think what Peter's saying is that maybe we should develop a method, a special permit or something like that, that would allow it to continue with some sort of a commercial use, but maybe lesser than what, what was it there. was. Yeah. I mean, well, because right now, idea. right now going up 82, that's all residential. Yeah. Right. From I, yeah. my yeah. place, my place yeah. on, and that, that right. was a doctor's no. office and lawyer's office. Right. That's a good point. That's well, a yeah. good point. And, and again, what I see what Peter's saying. This is not to take away the rights, it's actually to kind of keep their rights to some sort of use there that they wouldn't normally have well, at this point. You give them a shot at something yeah. that they wouldn't well, have a shot Well, let's take a look, and if you want to sit down with, with Michelle and Tom and talk about it, I think it would be something we certainly... And let me just say one thing about zoning. Zoning is never done. You're always looking at things saying, well, we need to do this, we need to do that, and, you know, it's, this, is, this is never going to be done. It's always an ongoing process. So if we have issues that we need to address, absolutely, you know, this is not the last one of these we're going to be doing, so. Yeah, you want to I mean, I don't want to do them? spot drilling. I mean, we've never no. agreed to that. Yeah. Okay. No, that sounds never good. Agreed to that. Okay. Any other questions, any concerns, any thoughts on the zoning amendments? I have a question about... Uh, 
uh, daycare centers. There is one that we, we mentioned is uh, a home style daycare. But in there, we don't mention the maximum amount of children that we're allowed. There's actually state definitions, um, and there, there are. There's three types. There's three different types within within the state. So the, right. they're discussing. So the only the only thing that this change will affect is the one that is the most intensive. The use, commercial ones. The commercial right. ones. And right now, um, for some reason, the the larger ones are only mm -hmm. allowed in residential districts, which doesn't make sense, so you can't even have them in a business district. So what we're trying to do is actually take them out of residential and put them into, <coughs> into business. This would not affect any pre-existing okay. daycare centers. Nor would it affect like a, a mother who takes in a certain number of children. They're regulated by Department of Social Services. And then you're also allowed home child care up to 10 it's or certain, 12, yeah, something like that. They're all defined by Which is state. another permit. This would actually be for the the very big commercial ones, which primarily have been allowed in some of the business districts, but it's they had to go to the zoning board, get a use variance type thing. So this would say, you know, those kind of big business type things should be in the business zone as of right, and yeah. it and they generate it up. usually generate a lot of traffic and noise, so it's not it's not very appropriate for them to be surrounded by residential uses. Yeah. And this won't affect anyone that's already existing. Oh no, no. Okay. All right. Um, I'd like to move on. If we okay? Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and again, if I say if you have any questions or thoughts, please, you know, contact our <laughs> professionals. Uh, Michelle is always available. We can set up a meeting. Michelle will come in and sit down with any of the board members. Any questions? And, and Peter, again, we're never really done with zoning, oh, so no, we no. will continue with this. So, um, two things I did want to discuss tonight, and um, uh, the one of them is going to be as uh, we discussed. I'd set out, we'd sent out an RFP, Michelle, at you, you and Scott sat on the board, the Cannon Property Concept uh, Project Concept Board. We purchased the property across the street. I'd say, uh, well, a year ago last June, we purchased it for $1.2 million from WCI when they went into bankruptcy court. We purchased 147 acres from them. And um, we've done our ton of wells, right, Scott? We've done a ton of wells out there. And we actually found Quite a bit of water. Yes. So we're happy about that. Uh, but what we have to do is uh, pay for the $1.2 million. And what I was hoping to do, I think what, one of the intents of purchasing that property is to provide senior housing. Um, so to provide senior housing, we've, you know, people come into my office and they say, we're seniors, we don't want to move out of town, we want to stay here, but there is no place. And they're absolutely correct. It is hard to find senior housing in the town of East Fishia. We've been, this is the one we can actually take charge of and make this happen. We own the property. So what we had done, number one, we put together a concept committee. And I know from the concept committee that the thought was to, from uh, the, I know from the Historic Society, Malcolm Mills especially, want to have a certain kind of a look because number one, this is gonna be across from the town hall. This is gonna be a project everybody's gonna see. And in my mind, this has gotta be a project that is done right. So we had looked at the types of uh, facade, the, 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 the looks of the buildings. We want to look a certain historic, and they're all going to match and everything like that. But with the wells, we found that we had to shift them, I believe, this way, because one of our producing wells is over there. So I think we're going to shift the project. We did send out RFQs to four um, companies. Um, and I know the board has seen the RFQs request for proposals so, uh, for qualifications. They came back with four qualified firms that are interested in doing this project. Um, now the, the, the next step would be to send out RFP. Um, and just so I let the board know, and I, I know I emailed you all of this, originally we were looking to do 100, 125 units. In my mind, and this is my thought, and I have spoken with a few people in uh, Norma Drummond especially, who's, who's a very smart person, and Don McGrath on, on land use. Um, what I had proposed to my board is that we would do, instead of doing 100, 125 units, let's do a 65 unit, we'll do one phase 65 units. What I'd like to see with this is I think if you, if you make a mistake with 65 units, it's a whole lot easier to fix with 65 units than it is with, say, 100 units or 125 units. Also, really, we need to gauge I know people come in and say, I'm senior, I want a place to live, but we really need, we don't really have a gauge of what the need out there is. So if we were to build a 65 unit and 
it was not to fill. Then we'll say, well, gee, we've got 60 seniors and they're satisfied, but we have five empty. So maybe we've satisfied our seniors' needs for the town of East Fisher, so we look for other needs. And that's my thought with the 65 doing a phased project. Um, I would like to do it. Um, we do have to pay the 1.2, actually it came out to 1.3 because we had charges and stuff like that. It's like when you buy a house, you have to fill the fuel tank and all that stuff. So we had a little extra fees. Um, but I would like to pay that off. Um, and with uh, 65 uh, units, the first one, I would like to see if we put together an RFP to get out there um, to these firms who also, all of them seem qualified. And uh, see and what would happen is they would come back to us with different proposals. But uh, Tom, I'd like to ask you, um, number one, it would take a rezone from us. Well, first of all, we're not building them. We're not building okay. them. Uh, basically, what the process would be is that you would put out a request for proposals. The developers would then come back and say, this is what we would like to build. This is what we would propose. They would give you an analysis of what the zoning dimensions would be, et cetera, to see how they fit or uh, whether it would be a CRD zone or whatever we have in our ordinance. And they would make you an offer uh, with respect to what they would pay for the property and what infrastructure they might put in that would not only benefit the project, but benefit uh, the, the community and the town as a whole. And then based on that, it would have to be evaluated by the town board. Probably a professional appraiser would be involved in it. And then you would make a decision as to if one of those proposals were acceptable to accept the proposal um, any sale of town property is subject to permissive referendum, so the people have 30 days after that to decide if they want to file a petition to have a vote on the sale, um, all kinds of things like that. So okay. that would more or less be the process. But we would be setting the criteria. We would be Correct. In your RFP, as you outlined, that would be part of the criteria. If there's infrastructure needs, uh, that, that would be listed in there, and the, the proposals would have to include meeting those goals. So this is where I, I would like to go. Uh, again, I know there have been some questions. How many units? What would the size? What would, would be the cost of them, the price of them, and all that? Um, but we really don't know because we don't design. We don't build. We put it out there with our criteria. They will come back to us with those kind of particulars. And then we will evaluate them. And if we don't like any of them, we can throw them all out, correct? Exactly. So that's where I'd like to go with that. Any thoughts on the board? Yeah, if you uh, <clears throat> wanted to do two phases, would we have an RFP for the first phase and then another RFP or one RFP and say we want it phased? Uh, could we have an option in the RFP to award the phase? <laughs> you could do that. Or we could, yeah. or we could say we could award, we could, we could extend that option to the second phase or we would have the option if we want to put out another RFP if we weren't. Right. You can really do all of the above. It depends yeah. upon how you word the RFP. Okay, because like you said, at the end of the first phase, if now we want uh, to go to housing for veterans or something, yeah. you know. Um, that may be not yeah. be something they do. Right, so we, that's why I'm asking. You know, what, what, what I like about this scenario as opposed to different scenarios, we're in the driver's seat. It's our property. We set the criteria. And, and, and you also may want to say that certain part of it be rental, certain part of it be for sale yeah. or ownership or all of it, you know, yeah. however you want to mix it up. Now, getting into that, who's going to own the land? They are. They're You're going to sell them that piece of now land. Now, are they going to, yeah, well, that's, you don't want to get in the same predicament that we had earlier either. With? What predicament? With the development where they can come in and just start flipping over to whoever they want and different. No, no, you would, that would all be structured in if the RFP and then in the subsequent contract. There would be performance bonds they would have to post, all kinds of things like that to ensure you're going to get the product that they've agreed to build. But the town itself is selling them whatever part of the land would be because at 141 acres, I think part of it has to be preserved for the well fields, mm -hmm. part of it be open space, yeah. and then part of it might be for other community purposes. Right. I mean, in my, my mind, this is just my mind, because I'm not an engineer, I don't do any layouts. I mean, I think we'd, we'd probably be looking at selling maybe 40 acres. 40 acres, we'd come out with 100 acres of whatever we want to do. And, and it should be pointed out that the WCI project had a density 
proposal 225. of 225 yeah. units. So yeah. this would be a far less impactful yes. proposal. Exactly. So uh, that's where we are. So again, we, we, we put it together. Uh, we put it out there. We see what comes back. We don't like it. We don't do it. We put it out again. And again, we're, it's under our control. So thoughts? John, I got a question. Uh, I know you mentioned before there's been a discussion in the past. And some of, some of us are new on the board, so we do not know what the discussion was previously. Uh, I have uh, put some emails out. I think the board should discuss this prior to giving it to, uh, to anybody out for a bid. Well, that's what we're doing tonight. Okay. This is why we're having this discussion here tonight with the professionals. Okay. So, any questions, any thoughts? And I'm not going to rush to put out the RFP. But we should not stop. We should continue with the process. So any questions you have tonight for this, for these professionals, or if you want to sit down and talk with them, again, we'll make everybody available during the week or whenever. I you know? uh, personally think there is a demand for uh, senior, senior housing mm -hmm. in, uh, in the area. Uh, after speaking to a lot of people in the community, they, they, there seems to be a need for that. The approach is how are we going to handle this? Uh, should be all privately sold. Uh, maybe some of some of it should be uh, rented out. And also, I would like to bring in the pictures some uh, veterans. Uh, We've discussed that and disabled. And the, the problem now, and this is this is one of the issues actually. What Nick was actually bringing up: what happens if you do senior housing? A typical straight senior housing is one thing. When you start getting into veterans and that may be another component and it may be maybe even the next phase it might be veterans okay. but there's different needs for those type of things so when you have somebody that does this for the senior they might not be as adept as doing for the veterans or the disabled so absolutely um, we've kicked around what what needs there are I think in my mind first and foremost I think we should address the seniors um, and yeah absolutely look at the other needs of the community we've we have a uh, quite a Bit of debate: Is it rental? Is it sales? You know, so there's a lot to be looked at. What are the rents going to be if it's rental? Um, who's going to be the management? Stuff like that. There's a, a quite a bit of uh, we've looked at. I we welcome any input from the board. I just like to say that first, I I think we need to do senior housing. I'd like to start with a 65 unit senior housing project, and if we fill it, then maybe the next one will be half seniors and maybe half for another segment of the community that needs help. Also, the, you know, there's also the thing for, um, I hate to say it, I just, one of the things that got me, Larry Reagan, who came into Reagan Development years ago, although there were issues, I had issues with that, um, I still believe there's, there's a need for a type of housing for our kids to move into, uh, you know, workforce type housing, because there's really nothing unless you, you know, can afford your first house, you should have a little a step, maybe townhouses, but there's a lot of different things to look at as the housing needs in a town of East Fishfield, but I would like to start with seniors. If I may? I, yes. I just think we should clarify too that with these units, I think the, the, the prior discussions was these are at market type mm -hmm. units. There's no subsidies. No. There's, and uh, when you say senior, it could be 55 or 62. That's the only discrimination you can create in the law. Yeah, yeah. Um, and most of the projects for the either disabled or veterans usually have some sort of subsidy program in it to buy down the, mm -hmm. the cost of them. So I think the, the thought here was that these would be at Did, market yeah. and it wouldn't be the subsidy elements. So. Yeah, we've always approached it at market, so. So is the discussion starting tonight and continuing or? Uh, oh, absolutely. We well, we've got to well, Oh, you would have, have to see a draft of the RFP. Yeah, yeah. 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 Of the I, RF. I think you, you should draft the RFP for sure. Yeah, good. Yeah. And we'll get out to the board members and take a look and see what you think. If you have any problems, we'll work on it. But again, I don't think this is a project that we should just let go. I think we have to move, keep, yeah, keep moving on it. No. So, uh, and even the last time when you went out for requests for qualifications, it comes on the town board agenda and you yeah. vote to authorize the RFP yeah. to be sent out. So it will come back. Hopefully that would be a resolution. I think that we would do in the March uh, meeting if we could, I think that'd be give us another month. If everybody's okay with the RFP, I'm not going to rush out an RFP that the board isn't happy with, but I do think we 
should continue working along these lines. So, all right, so if everybody's okay, we'll work on the RFP, get it out to the board, rough, rough draft to the board members, and uh, get some input. Okay? Sounds great. Yeah, and again, I, I think that right now, I would like to see what we can do for our seniors' needs. So, all right, um, last thing of tonight, and I do want to talk just quickly and uh, with our professionals here, and Michelle, I'm glad you're here tonight. Um, we did get the application for the sports dome. I believe the application was prepared. We had to ask for some different prints from the applicant because the prints he gave us weren't as clear as, they sh as we required. So we had extra prints. I believe they'll be ready for your package you should be getting, then we'll be talking about them. Um, but I did want to talk a little bit about that process too because what we do is we have an application for a large sports dome out at the old IBM West complex. Uh, IBM West Complex, five very large buildings in various states of decay and disarray. Um, really, the site hasn't been used since, I think, 06. Uh, it just sits there. It's had plenty of people look, or companies look to buy it. Nobody's bought it until the company Lindau bought it. Oh, 2000, December 2010, I believe the closing was, and they never did a thing with it. They're back. The Chinese company is back. They're not going to do their solar facility, as they had said previously. They originally said they were going to invest $80 million in the project, and we waited with our, we held our breath, and the only thing that happened was the grass grew. Um, but they've come back. They are on a shoestring budget. They're not going to be doing solar or panel manufacture here, but they are looking to do something. But one of one of the keys that I believe, one of the keys to having the West Complex become redeveloped is the Sports Dome project because that will actually enable Linau to give them some cash flow to work on the project, work on the, work on the, um, on the site. And I just think it would be a very good thing in two, two respects. It shows some activity at site. I think it's going to be a good thing for the site. I think what I like about the Sports Dome versus another mall, we've had proposals on other properties would be like, um, oh, I want to put a commercial mall. So I said, okay, um, we looked at one up further on 52, we want to do a commercial mall. I said, so a commercial mall, you're going to build that here, now you have this commercial mall right across the street that's just barely getting by. How are they going to survive if you're taking customers from them? I said, this is not going to work. But what the Sports Dome does, it draws people from out of the area into, the, into this area. I think that's huge. Now, we do have a little bit of a debate going on among us that will they just go to the dome and leave? Or will they go to the dome, play soccer, stop at a restaurant, stop for a burger, pick up gas and gator? I don't know. We're having a little debate on that. But I do think that the dome is going to draw people which we would not have here. So we have the application. And we'll have it in the packet. Tom, the, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the process for that, if you will. Okay. At the current time, um, the West Campus is an industrial zone. It's an I zone. In our zoning ordinance, we allow, by special permit, large-scale outdoor recreational facilities, i.e. the golf center. That was a provision that was put into it. So the Dome people have filed an application with the town board for the town board to consider amending the zoning ordinance to provide for a special permit for large-scale indoor-outdoor recreation facilities. And then that would be allowed in an industrial zone. So that would be the first step. The process with that is you have the application before you. It's required that you have to refer to your planning board to get their formal review and comments before you can act on it. Uh, and it also has to re be referred to the Dutchess County Planning Department and some other agencies. Then it comes back to you, and then if you wish to go forward, you would schedule a public hearing, hold a public hearing. Um, if, you would do, if you adopt it, it then goes to the planning board, and the planning board has to go through the regular uh, site plan review process with additional public hearings, et cetera. Yeah. So. And it's, I mean, we had tried, we have done this in the past. We've done it concurrently, too. They would come before the town board, and we would do the review process concurrently with the planning board so it doesn't extend to be like a two year project process. So we'll see how that goes. So I just wanted to say you'll have that in your packet. So, again, you have any questions, reach out to the professionals. Um, I would like to refer that um, to the planning board next week. That way, the planning board will officially have it. They did get a conceptual last week. But this way, they will formally get a, res uh, a s from us, and then we could set a public hearing to see um, 
to get this project moving. Didn't, so, didn't we, when the original dome came, ten years ago? Right. You didn't create a special permit. That was a proposed rezone. I think we went back in. And that was on the old Heritage Plaza yeah. site, correct? On the Heritage Plaza site. Yeah. They started out. Well, we changed a whole bunch of things about slopes and peaks and. It was. It's. We it was, started it. Through it and it started it. When they it ended. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So I'd like to do that. And just while we're talking about it, one last thing before we wrap up tonight is um, where the original dome was proposed was the East Fishel Golf Center. And understandably, the East Fishel Golf Center wasn't happy that we weren't going to stuff that big dome on their little property. But I, I've been talking to the East Fishel Golf Center people, and I said, you know, you do have a very good site. You have uh, a good location. Let's see what else you can do there. They came back two weeks ago. They have a proposal for that site also. And it's an assisted living facility, which would be, um, they, a lot of it's gonna be Alzheimer's or, 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 or seniors that have special needs. It would be like a medical facility. Our zoning, Tom, I don't believe allows that. Right. So we would have to amend the zoning, and I don't know if you'd want to consider amending that zoning to allow that while we're doing the other zoning. So we might look at some more zoning amendments coming up. But as far as that, when we talked about the buildings and the uses, actually they said because of the size of the parcel, they may be able to do another building. And when they discussed another building, I did ask them on that one if they would make a building or a wing for veterans because you see a lot of veterans will come back and they will have post-traumatic stress disorder or they have physical or psychological disabilities. And they said they'd be more than happy to accommodate that. So, but our zoning does not allow that. So that's something we would be talking about, the zoning. Michelle, I know you, this is the first you've heard about this, but uh, this is you something that we'll be looking it. at. <laughs> so I just want to let you know. So, uh, and that in itself is exciting because again, I think that this is another part of the community that needs to be addressed. And, and I do believe that if this could happen over there, the Heritage Plaza, which is across the street, which is, pretty empty right now. Maybe we could see that fill up with doctor's offices. Maybe we could see that fill up with restaurants because when your son or your daughter comes to visit you, they come on, mom, we're gonna, go across, we're gonna go across the street. We're gonna go have a burger or something like that. So I see this as possibly helping these Fishfield Golf Center serving the needs of one segment of our community and also maybe helping out the old plaza across the street. So that's where we are with that. They just came in two weeks ago. They, 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 they found them, I said, I think the board will like this idea, and we'll talk about this one further. Once they get something a little bit more on paper, I'll let you know, and we'll talk about it. But we are doing, again, our zoning is set, but it isn't keeping up with the real needs of what we need today. So I think we will be doing some more zoning changes. So. Okay, that's about it for tonight. Unless anybody has any questions for, for the professionals? Did I miss something? Oh, I did have liaison reports, but before we go on at that is zoning, are we good with that? That's, I would like to look at that further. Are we okay? Manny, you okay with it, the assisted living concept? Yeah, I mean, uh, is it a, a private, private kind of a Private facility? company come in to yeah. do it. Yeah. Tom? Yeah, I think it's a great idea. You think it'd be good? Mm -hmm. Okay, Nick, what do you think? I think any development down that corridor to start, yeah. we, need, we need it. Yes, the 52 mm -hmm. corridors really suffered in the last yeah. 10 years. and. Uh, uh, I, we can see with what's going on with IBM that it's, it's very shaky at best. I mean, so. you know I've been working on economic development now for two years, yep. and I'm getting together the committee soon, so. Yep. and I think it's a great thing. Yeah. Peter, would you be okay with uh, yep. looking, looking at assisted living? Oh, yeah. Okay, very good. All right, with that, uh, we get to liaison reports, and we're gonna start. Peter, highway, how is our highway department doing? They're, Probably all took off after all that snow. They've been plowing. Uh, over the last couple months. I didn't know that. <laughs> we've been plowing snow, Dennis said. And keeping up with repair of the vehicles. Actually, the vehicles have been holding up pretty well. Um, and they've been hauling a lot of sand and salt to replenish the stockpiles. And believe it or not, he's still chipping Christmas trees. They're still wow. coming in. They got a little bit of tree work done and now they're trying to open up lots of catch basins. Yes. If you have any catch basins near you, you might want to open it up. You might actually want to open it up two days ago because it's yeah. supposed to rain for the next 24 hours. Yeah, it's going to be some rain. Um, so we'll see how it goes. I'm always a little concerned. 
uh, during, with, during January thaw is always a concern, or when you have a rain event, we still have a lot of snow out there. But let's see, I got to hand it to our highway department. They do a very good job. Um, one of the things I have seen, the international trucks we've been using for probably the last 10 years. Um, I like to see, we're talking with that, it's about making change from another brand. We keep the transfer cases keep giving us fits. So we're going to look at maybe going to a different truck for the next yeah. in the next round. He's done one uh, truck today, but he expected yeah. it fixed by the end of the day. Yeah. So. All right. And actually, we're sitting okay with salt and sand. It's a lot better than the island is. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I gotta agree with John 100%. Our highway crew does phenomenal work because I went out a lot during those storms. Spent a lot of time with the police department during those storms, and um, yeah, the other towns stink. Really? No, we, we, we do well. We do well. Nick, uh, planning and zoning, how's things going there? Planning, planning and zoning is good. You stole my thunder a little with the application for the dome, but that's okay. Um, we had to cancel a few meetings for the weather, uh, but we're looking for a uh, positions open on the planning board. So if somebody okay. is interested, please put your name forward. Uh, but that's about it. Okay. How are they doing as far as applications? Are we seeing them pick up again yet, or I so, know for a while some, there? We sometimes down. it's uh, yeah. There's a little. It's a little heavy, and then sometimes it's one, two, three. Yeah. But. Yeah. And I got. I do. I am very impressed when I watch our zoning and our planning board. I think that they do a very good job. Very diligent. Very happy with all our professionals. Okay. Even that group over there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All righty. Uh, Tom, recreation. How's things with recreation? Uh, the board is great. The Rec Advisory Board is currently working on a smoke-free initiative okay. uh, to have smoke-free of all of our recreation facilities, uh, which they currently are not. Okay. Um, I would have to, um, all due respect, I, I'm always torn with that because, you know, smoke-free. Let me just throw this out there because I think when kids are playing sports, that they should not, you should not have adults or other teens, you know, smoking cigarettes around. But let me just ask you, so you're walking on a walking path out in the middle of nowhere and you, like, should that be smoke free? Well, depending if it's on our rec department, if it's in our, our facility. That's what they're currently working on. We're okay. Investigating more of. Okay. And that's my question because it right. is our well, that's facility. That's a good question, yeah. right? Yeah. I, and, and, and I don't smoke. Neither do I, I don't smoke. But sometimes I do feel bad because people do smoke, and I think, you know, I, I don't like to... Is that when they're blowing the smoke? <laughs> I know, but that's the problem, you know? It's simple I, consideration. I got to tell you, well, I walk my dog out in the park. If you don't clean up after your dogs, I'm going to have that closed. But again, it's, it's simple response, taking responsibility for yourself and simple consideration for the other people. Right. And Otherwise, been, we don't have these discussions. There have been instances where, yeah. um, apparently, I've been yeah. told, um, during some of the games or, you know, during the carnivals. Yeah. And there's a lot of those kids around. Yeah, yeah. So they're investigating it more. Yeah, so okay. To us and then they can have some Okay. I, I'd have to think right. about my, oh, could we just do his own, but whatever, we'll, we'll talk about it further, so. Okay, and everything else is going well with the record? Everything else is going well. Good. There's, uh, the expansion of the Route 52 West parking lot uh, they're working on. Uh, I talked to our engineer recently about that. Hampered by the weather like the rest of us. Yeah. So. Okay. But everything else, and uh, Mike Keeser, the chairman, doing a fantastic job, as are the other members of the uh, Rec Advisory Board. Oh, good, good. Glad to hear it. Glad to hear it. Manny, reports? Yeah. Uh, I just want to take a couple of seconds. I want to thank you uh, for giving me the opportunity to, uh, to uh, be a liaison for uh, the Elsa Lake uh, community. Uh, also, I want to say that I'm... Uh, I'm here also to represent the rest of the town, even though that I, uh, I, uh, I'm involved mm -hmm. with the Osali community. Uh, we are uh, working on this project. We met with the town engineer and uh, the members of the board of Osali Lake. Uh, we want to see this project go forward. Okay. It's been over 20 years that these people have had these issues. Mm -hmm. So, which which we'll project? Well, you know, the lake, uh, with all the problems that mm -hmm. uh, the lake is uh, creating in the community, and there is about 400, 450 families over there. Yep. And, uh, so right now we are uh, looking for funds uh, to, to take care of this problem. Uh, I don't want to see their taxes go up. 
So we are, uh, mm -hmm. we are meeting tomorrow uh, with uh, uh, Senator Gibson's office. I reached out with uh, uh, Congressman uh, Sean Maloney mm -hmm. uh, and uh, some of the local legislators to see if there is any funds available so we could take care of this, uh, this, uh, this issue. Okay, what's the project, if I may ask? I know in 2010, well, uh, we, we, if I may, we've, we have actually presented several different right. options, and I didn't know if it was any of those options you're right. looking at or, right. or what Some you're, we, we, and, and if I may, just so that you understand, because you know, I know everybody says, well, it's been 20 years. When I took office, I remember Morse Associates, the first thing they did, they came, like, said, I'm not supposed to mention them, but they had all of our projects. And uh, the engineer at the time said, oh yeah, we're gonna do the Hillside Lake project. I said, oh, wonderful. So how much is it gonna cost? He said, $3 million. I was a little stunned, and they said, well, you know, it's going to be paid for by the community. I said, it's still a lot of money. Um, we looked at it further. We actually had Dredge Master in, I think, twice, who's a dredge person. He's looked at that. He's very familiar with that. We looked at, what do we do with the 100,000 yards of material that this project is going to dredge generate when you dredge that 26-acre lake to that depth? We looked at that. And actually, remember, Scott, we had a contract. We were talking about pumping that almost to the town of LaGrange. We thought we found a home for. We've worked on this quite extensively. I know, you know, people think that it's just been a project problem for 20 years, and then we uh, we hired because we thought we'd get somebody who's more in that specifically in that business as opposed to our contract engineers. Uh, forget who it was Great Eastern Ecology. We hired them to do a draft, and they did one. When they actually showed a wetlands around the lake and cleaning out the lake. We talked about that one a bit, and I know we had the Hillside Lake Board here. Oh, well, 2010, we had three, three meetings with the community, and they, were, they, they reacted to a myriad of different issues in addition to the lake. We had brought that, those three options to the lake at the 2010, uh, I think it was October at Van White Junior High School. We brought them up, and then actually after that, we actually even talked about doing a pilot program where we had another company that would come in and they would clean the lake. They would take up the, the, uh, the grass material out of the lake. And we thought we would do, I think we were going to do like a five-day pilot program, but the uh, Hillside Lake Board didn't want to do it. So I don't want you to think that we haven't done anything. You know, we've looked at this. It is a very complex issue. And uh, I'm glad to see that hopefully if you can get some funding, I know we've looked for funds quite a bit. Which option are you looking to do the entire well, lake? We, are, uh, we sat with the board and the town engineer and we're looking at the, the dredging and uh, right now I don't have it. Uh, it's the third solution that we looked at, reducing the size of the lake. Smaller lake, yeah. Right. And uh, it's the least uh, expensive of all three mm. projects. That's something that I think we could work with. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's uh, going to be something that it's going to take care of the problem forever. I mean, of course, we need to maintain that from time to time. But mm -hmm. uh, if we don't do anything, we are uh, looking for serious consequences. So they understand that. We, we came to the, to the understanding that we're going to work together and have this okay. resolved. And uh, I mean, God willing, and with the help of some, some other official, we, Okay. We'll, uh, we'll work with it. Good. Uh, I have uh, I had brought the letter from the board regarding the opening of the, the valve. I guess as soon as the weather breaks a little bit, probably we'll have that valve reopen. And yeah, uh, absolutely. Whatever comments they have to bring to the town, I I guess we'll go through you. Through you, and I guess I'll bring whatever. Absolutely. To them, so. That sounds good. I, we've always been big supporters of the Hillside Lake uh, project because we need to get something done out there. So. Very good. All righty. Anything else? Basically it. Good. Any questions? Any thoughts? Concerns? Please, oh, I forgot mine, didn't I? I'm glad you mentioned that, Peter. He only came for that. I know. He's, oh, you know what? He's got a folder. <laughs> Lieutenant Keefe is here. and He's got a folder <laughs> in his hand, and I know that he's got stats. But I have stats. I have stats. All righty, let me find my stats for the police department. We actually meet, uh, being, I'm the new liaison to the town of East Fisher Police Department. And I, I will say I'm very, always very impressed with our police department. They do a great job. Um, and I would just like to say they, they break down their stats on a yearly basis, the 2012-2013 the annual comparison. What I do is I will pass this out to the board. We will make these available. 
to anybody that would like to take a look. And they just basically domestic disputes, criminal mischief, motor vehicle theft, community affairs, larcenies, burglaries, robberies, assaults. And they go right on through all the um, different types of crimes. Some are up, some are down. Um, and then they also, I, our police department also responds to any ambulance calls, fire calls. Our guys, our people are always there. And, and I got to tell you, they, they take care of our schools and they do a great job. Um, Lieutenant Keith comes in quite often and upstate, updates us on what's going on. And uh, they do a very good job. But one of the things I did want to mention that I was at the last, uh, last meeting over there and a gentleman from the United States Civil Service came in and gave, uh, do you have a copy of that? Do you have a copy of that? That's one thing you don't have a copy of. I was going to ask for a copy. Yeah. Uh, he, he, he gave us a, a, certi a certificate of proclamation from the Civil Service because... Secret Service. What is it? Secret Service. Secret Service, sorry. Secret Service. Um, because uh, our people actually arrested uh, a group with a large amount of counterfeit money. Uh, Kevin, what was the amount? Was it 30000 10000 Okay. 30000 with inflation. Yeah. 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 They uh, and our guys squat them, and it was just it was just being in the right place at the right time. And one of our officers noticed something, noticed noticed a store owner coming out saying, "Hey, that guy handed me a 20, the counterfeit twenty. <laughs> but you know what? You followed up. You 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 got the car. You you arrested the suspects. And uh, really, I, I can't tell you how proud I am of our police department. You guys do a great job. You're accredited by New York State. And I know you keep very high standards. And uh, I do have all the stats, and you guys do a lot of calls. But uh, just really want to thank you for all you do. Can I just make one comment about the stats, John? Just to clarify. I guess. Can I stop you? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Uh, some of these yeah. Are yeah. Down, and that's the result of better record keeping. And regrouping of some of the categories. You better yeah. categorize some of these. Uh, like if someone falls in and says, my house is burglarized. We get there and find out it's just a trespass. We, 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 we classify it as a trespass. Classify it as what they truly yeah. are. Whereas previously we just took numbers off the bar entry, which wasn't always as accurate. Accurate, yeah. So some numbers are seared down are because they were channeled into the proper category. Yeah. So. Okay. And again, if anybody has any need to meet with our police, uh, Kevin is always available. He's very good. And Kevin, you also attend the rec board meetings. Uh, one of the things that we have really done, we've really stepped up this past year, has been security in, in the recreation fields, because it was getting quite out of control. And uh, I think that with the, some of the arrests, it's really sent a message because it's a whole new, it's just a whole new uh, rec field out there. It's just a wonderful thing. So uh, really proud to have you guys out there, you men and women. That's it. So with that, anything else? Yeah, I'd like just to say that your announcement before of uh, Julie's Jungle. Yep. There's a few members and our legislator, Marge Horn, just give them a round of applause. <laughs> Great job. I'm so proud to be part of that. It was an easy thing to do, and it's an exciting project. So everybody stay tuned to find out what the next step is going to do. Very good. All right, if that's it, I think we wrap up for tonight. The, uh, the voting meeting will be next Thursday, 7.30, same, same time, same place. And thank you very much for coming. <laughs>